We turn now to President Biden's domestic agenda. After 18 months of tense negotiations, backroom dealing, and more than a little name calling, Joe Manchin, the most conservative Democrat in the Senate from deep red West Virginia, and often a thorn in the side of his party, agreed to a far reaching deal that would represent the most ambitious plan to combat climate change that the U.S. has ever undertaken. That is, if it becomes law. With Republicans uniformly opposed, Democrats will need to stay totally united in the coming weeks to pass the bill, and that is far from guaranteed. Joining us now is the architect of the bill, Senator Joe Manchin. Senator Manchin, thank you for joining us. So what's the bottom line? Do you have everybody on board, including Senator Sinema, who, of course, was not part of this negotiation and has opposed at least one key tax provision in this bill. Well, John, let me just say that this is all about fighting inflation. That's what it's about. Inflation is just absolutely destroying families across West Virginia and across America. High price of gasoline just to go to work, high price of food just to maintain your, uh, sustain yourself during the day and, and every day for your family, and then the high cost of energy and any and everything else you want to do in life is taking a tremendous toll. That's what this is about. And this is, a, and this is an Inflation Reduction Act. We're investing. We're not spending money. We're investing. We've taken a $3.5 trillion uh, aspirational bill uh, that I never could come to an agreement on any way, shape, or form, but I tried, couldn't get there. And we've taken $3.5 trillion of spending down to $400 billion of investing without raising any taxes whatsoever. We've closed some loopholes, didn't raise any taxes, John. But is Senator Sinema on board? She opposed one of those loopholes you closed, the carried interest loophole. Is, is she going to Well, let me this? just say this. Senator Sinema is, my, is, is my, my dear friend. I have all the respect for her. She's extremely bright and works very, very hard. She has an awful lot in this piece of legislation, the way it's been designed, as far as the reduction of Medicare, letting Medicare go ahead and negotiate for lower drug prices. She's very involved in that, and I appreciate that. Also, basically, when you, she said... Uh, taxes. We're not going to raise taxes. I agree with that. And I made sure we scrubbed this. There was not a tax increase. What they're talking about, John, the tax rate used to be at 35% in 2017, the corporate tax rate. <clears throat> it went to 21, 14% reduction. I was un un unbeknownst to me that there are people not paying any taxes whatsoever. These are the largest corporations in America of a billion dollars of value or greater. And we just said it should be a floor of a 15% minimum. I think that everybody in West Virginia and most people in America that have corporations and pay their taxes believe that everyone would be paying at least 21. So we made sure that we did not raise taxes. We closed loopholes. As for this inflation question, you had opposed uh, Build Back Better, the, the, the full bill, and, and even some scaled back versions saying that it would increase inflation. And we have uh, a, an estimate out here uh, from Wharton's budget model, this is the UPenn Wharton sure. budget model, that says that this bill actually would, they say very slightly, but would increase inflation over the course of the next year and a half. Well, we had 17 economists, Nobel laureate economists, say that the, uh, a year ago almost, said that the inflation would be transitory and wouldn't last, it would just go away. So I understand there's difference of opinion, but everybody, if they look at this bill objectively, we're paying down $300 billion in, uh, for, for debt. $300 billion we're taking of this bill, paying it towards debt. First time in 25 years, John. Never been so, done in so, 25 years. What, we're basically investing in reliable, reliable energy, making sure that we use our fossil fuels as clean and cleaner than any place else in the world. But we basically aggressively produce more energy to reduce the prices of gasoline and energy costs at your, on, at your house and everywhere else. And basically, we've invested in new technologies to make more manufacturing back, such as batteries. We're going to start making batteries in America. We're starting extracting rare earth minerals, producing it, processing it, making it here. But, so but all me, of this, they're not factoring any of that in. Let me ask you this, though. Uh, if this is, is such a good bill, as you've outlined, why did it have to be negotiated in secret? As you know, this has rubbed some of your colleagues the wrong way. Bernie Sanders uh, said, last I heard, Senator Manchin is not the majority leader. Despite what you may think, last I heard, he is not the only member of the Democratic caucus. Why did this have to be basically just you and Chuck Schumer in a room? 
I understand all the frustration and the reason for that. I didn't want them to go through that again. I didn't know if we could get a deal. I did not know if we could come to an agreement. So why would I put people through this, all, all this drama? I, I'm not, I've been through this for eight months. I tried. I kept trying. I stayed there and kept talking. I just couldn't get to where they wanted to go to in my caucus. And rather than everybody down, and here we go again, I didn't want to go through that. So I wanted to see if we could come to that agreement. I thought it fell apart a couple of weeks ago, but it didn't. We come back and we start making adjustments to make sure it wasn't inflammatory. This is not adding to inflation. This is going to help take us to a place of prosperity. I truly believe in my heart that we're going to have more energy produced. We're going to be able to help our geopolitical partners around the world who are in desperate need of our energy. Of course. And we're going to be able to be so energy independent, and we're, all going to, and, and we're going to be able to invest, John, in the energy of the future. So uh, before you go, can you clarify something for me? You seem to suggest uh, this sure. week that you might not uh, support Joe Biden, or, you wouldn't, or at least wouldn't commit to supporting Joe Biden if he's the Democratic nominee. Uh, uh, for for uh, for 2024. So what's the bottom line? If Biden is renominated by your party, the, will, will you will you support him, or could you vote for a Republican? John, John, this is everybody's worried about the elections. That's the problem. It's a 2022 election, 2024. No, election. But, but no, but this is I'm a simple question. Would you? Would you? I'm not, no, no, it's just, it's not. I'm not getting involved yeah. in that, John. I'm really not, and I'll tell you the reason. This type of a legislation wouldn't happen unless the President of the United States was involved. And he, had, he gave his blessing and signed off on it. I can assure you that, and I appreciate that more than anybody knows because so, this has been tough. So you, wouldn't, you, won't, you won't even... Haul. So I'm not, going, I'm not getting into the 2022 or 2024. Whoever is and, my president, that's my president. And Joe Biden is my president right now. Okay, and you, so you won't even... And, you, and you can't even rule out voting for a Republican for president? I'm not getting into the 2024 okay. election. All right. I'm not okay. going to get in the 2022 election. That's all right. All. all right, Senator Manchin, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John, for having me.